in 75, I suddenly saw the whole place freshly. I began taking pictures. And now, 40 years later, unbelievably, the whole lot has been made into a book uh, alongside a book about Wales, North Wales, where I lived for 10 years, and a book about Liverpool. And that book, the theme was, I thought, was, was uh, landscape. But now I see all this Irish stuff here, and there's so many people in the pictures. Somehow, these pictures have, have, have um, ended up being in the book, which is pretty amazing to me, because I didn't select them. I worked with, with uh, three other ed editors. Uh, so this is their selection, and uh, these are just really poor quality photocopies, work prints of the layout of the book. When I come back to Ireland, I'll be shooting video as well as taking stills. This picture here um, is, is from the video. My mother never came back to Ireland only for funerals. The reason my mother left Ireland was, was for, you know, due to religious intolerance. She was Catholic and she married a Protestant. And because of that, none of her family ever spoke to her again. So that's the story. So to have her in the, in the book, uh, her eyes and a bit of that intensity coming across um, is pretty good. But again, I, you know, that's too close to me to put it in the book. But in fact, someone who doesn't know that story you know, has put it in the book. Um, that's great. Here's a, an early picture of my, my father. And he, he loved the land more than anything, but nevertheless, he, he, uh, he left the land and moved to England. How you put a set of pictures together to add up to a lot more than um, the individual pictures is, is a whole other art form. I don't know what happens during that process. Uh, and that's the best thing, you know, finding pictures which uh, you, you, you didn't know would work, uh, that, that, that do work. And it, all, you know, it also depends how they're, they're presented. Looking at this latest version uh, makes me feel um, it's, it's uh, scary, you know, it's kind of, this is the final version. It makes me think when we were earlier in Hickson's, you know, photographing upstairs there, it was absolutely incredible. Should, you know, shall I, this is the final edit, so shall I rush home and look at what I've got? Because maybe we've got something really special that's, that's better than that, I don't know. Often in, in, in my books, the pictures are there not necessarily as a great photo in itself, but as a part of a, a body of work which adds up, like different lines of a poem maybe kind of artistic form where it won't just be a document telling you something, it would be a picture which you can look at again and again and again and, and interpret in different ways, I hope. This, this is uh, Mayo, they've, they've reached the final. Uh, they've, they, they've often come close, you know, and never won big things. They're just crazy about football. This kind of situation I've been in so many times. You know, I photographed at Anfield, uh, I hang around the streets outside. Um, in Liverpool, it was the culture of the city, you know, and uh, so how could I not, you know, it's a very exciting place to go. A bad result today, so people weren't really expecting it, but you know, it would have been great. Work out strategies, you know, how to, how to work, and in all kinds of situations, whether the, the football or the dock road, and you, you weighing up, you know, have I got a right to take this picture? What would happen if I take this picture? Um, but at the same time, you know, you've got to take it now, or it'll be the moment will be gone. I moved to Merseyside in 1978, and on the corner was was a nightclub called the Chelsea Ridge. 
look at all these faces. And I like faces, you know, and all this material. I thought, wow, you know, could I photograph this? I was too shy and scared, you know. It was so noisy, people were drunk, they would think you're a pervert and so on. It was easy if I was invisible. I wouldn't have those kind of tensions. It probably wouldn't be as good. I wouldn't be as involved, maybe. I did it really seriously from 84 to 86. I say seriously, three nights a week I'd go in there. A lot of the people I would see on the street would end, you know, they were teenagers or whatever. By 1985, they'd be in the club. They would know me from the streets. That made it easier. I knew I wanted to get the emotion and the feeling. I was spending my life, my time, looking at them, and they're like looking at each other, and uh, looking for love seemed okay at the time. Because I've taken pictures for so long, I periodically come across the same people again later. Uh, I photographed kids in New Brighton um, when they were kids, and then I found myself photographing them with their kids, you know, 20 years later. I'd always give pictures back to people. It seems, you know, only natural. If I had things done with the pictures, like they, they, they ended up in books or exhibitions, and those people are in the pictures or people they know, um, it's a good feeling, I think, to show them this. Anyway, I asked this girl if I could take a picture of her, and um, she was there, stood in the middle of the road, the full moon behind her, the, the water still glistening on the road, and it was late this kind of time of day. It was a long exposure. I handheld it at like quarter of a second. It's not absolutely sharp, a bit underexposed, but it's a picture. So it's in the book. I just had the idea. I'm here. We've we got the book. Let's find out if she's still here. We'll take another picture if she is. You know, what will she think of it? You know? There can't have been that many girls that age around here in 75, can there? It doesn't look like it's born like Anne. But it's not Anne, Tom. The man has a short hair. That's short curly hair, Tom. Anne has a short curly hair. I just ring Anne. It's not right. I mean, yeah. And Anne's hair was straight. It was. She never had a curly She had a curly hair in her 20s. Oh, that was in her 20s. What was it? Yeah, 1975. But then it could be Anne. She should have curly hair in her 20s. Oh, really? Anne, did you work up early here when you were young? When you were... Did you? 1975, 76. Francis, Anne is saying that's what? Well, maybe it is, Tom. I've never seen her. Does she never remember? Yeah, maybe it is her, so... Well, yeah, but... Oh, so it is her. We have it all, so no, Francis. Oh, that's all right, Tom. It's just, I possibly... Can I put you on? Can I put you on to that man, Anne? Never saw Anne with Curly here. Go on, come on. He's beside me now, and he'd be disappointed if he doesn't talk to the woman in the picture. No, he's not looking for an old girlfriend or anything, no. <laughs> no, he's, he's married with two kids. Congrats for finding <laughs> For finding... There was a full moon in the evening, Anne. Yeah, hold on. Hi, hello. Yeah, no, it's just... I've just made pictures all these years, and suddenly um, lots of things are happening, books are being published. And now that's gone in a book, which has gone all over the whole world, so any of any of yours in Dublin? Well, they they could come to the opening. Graveyard, and it's uh, it's where my mother's father's family and mother's mother's family were buried. And it's great, you know, to come and visit someone here. You know, you get a sense of other stuff, you know, because it's this is it. When I came to, to to get this camera, I was always interested in in, in landscapes um, and panoramic format. My favorite photographer in the whole world was this Czech photographer called Joseph Sudek. 
and he, he did these wonderful panoramic pictures as well. Okay. Doing the work is an adventure, and adventure means going somewhere you don't know where you're going, particularly why you're going there, and what does it mean you find out when you get there. So I deal with this landscape and then how it works as a picture, not my meaning I'm imposing on it. I used to paint, I used to paint abstractly. The process of making pictures affects me, just like the process of painting affects me. Okay, I give up, I'm going to go around the other side. Through that process of trying and looking and trying and looking, you get closer and it becomes interesting. So you take a picture and you think, ah, no, that wasn't any good, but that, that involved decisions, you know, concentration, and then you go on and try another one. And after a few minutes, half an hour, you're forgetting what you're doing, you're just doing it. So on a good day, um, working seriously, I'll, I'll, I might shoot 10 rolls. Um, average day, three or four rolls. And suddenly it's three hours later and uh, you might have got a picture. Over the years I've never made any money doing this. Photography is really expensive. You shoot a lot of film, the film's expensive. You've got to pay for the process, you have to make work prints um, if you don't work commercially. So my way of working was to, uh, I taught B-Tech photography did that two days a week. I took photographs five days a week and my wife worked. Um, things were okay, but never made any, any serious money. You know, many years I'd make a loss. I mean, partly it's my own fault because I never wanted to finish anything. I wanted to carry on working on something over and over and over again. Kept too many balls up in the air. Never completed the project. tell where you're coming from. So if I did it for free, you know, out of kind of love for the situation, the people, that seemed a fair exchange. I'm kind of stealing the pictures in a way, but I'm giving all this stuff back. because it'll all be there, you know, one day for those people. So that's the way I worked. I didn't, you know, didn't want to be anybody. galleries started representing me and I was selling prints, I couldn't believe it. And here I am now where, you know, lots of recognition, you know, some print sales, shows all over the world. Um, and every, you know, a lot more people are enthusiastic and, and like photography, it's, so it's, it's, it's really good. We didn't knock his camera out of his hand. And from the Chelsea. And look at life from the inside out here on BBC4 next tonight. Ben Garrard exposes more brand new secrets of bones in just a moment. And then at nine, the inner workings of the incredible human foot in the second of our brand new dissection programs. Stay with us. Good evening to the 